Okay, welcome back. And we are continuing our discussion of the antenna. And remember last time we talked just a little bit about how it is that an electromagnetic wave causes charges to move around in the conducting piece of wire that essentially is every antenna. And that in turn causes an AC signal to show up in the radio receiver. And that's uh, essentially what we're seeing over here in the animation that we discussed last time. Okay. I mentioned in the text, though not in my speech in the last video, that this is an example of a half wave dipole antenna. Okay. And that means that its ideal length is half the wavelength of the wave, electromagnetic wave that it's trying to receive. Another common type of antenna is called a monopole antenna. It's pretty common in both radio transmitters and radio receivers. And in that case, um, the physics behind why it's a quarter and why it's a half is a little complicated. So we'll just take it as an axiom here, but for monopole antennas, unlike dipole antennas, and this is a quarter of the wavelength, okay? So in other words, the length of the radio transmitter tower or the length of the receiver's antenna, radio receiver's antenna, should be a quarter of the wavelength of the carrier wave is trying to receive. And that seems like a really simple rule and something that should be achievable. But if we just take a quick look at what a typical AM radio station's wavelength is, I would think we can see why this is potentially an, an issue. All right. So if we want to receive an 850 kilohertz signal, so something fairly far down in the AM radio band, then we can figure out what the wavelength of that carrier wave is <clears throat> by using the equation that we saw uh, right at the beginning of our discussion of electromagnetic waves, right? That the speed of light is equal to the frequency of the electromagnetic wave times the wavelength of the electromagnetic wave. So F is frequency and lambda, the Greek letter here, uh, is wavelength. So if we rearrange that real quick, so we divide both sides by frequency, we get that this equation on the left, let me actually change my pointer to a pen. So we get this equation here on the left when we define both sides by frequency. If we put in uh, what is approximately the speed of light, all right, so that's three with uh, eight zeros after it, so three times 10 to the eighth, okay, meters per second is the units on that. And then uh, in the denominator, we need to convert our 850 kilohertz to just hertz, the standard unit for frequency. So we move the decimal place over three spots and we've got 850,000 hertz. When you do this division, you get an approximate wavelength of 350 meters for this 850 kilohertz carrier wave. And even when you divide that by four, you're still getting something that's approximately 90 meters, right? I mean, a little bit less than that, but still 90 meters is how long your antenna would have to be on a receiver to best receive okay, the uh, 850 kilohertz carrier wave. This is clearly impractical, okay, unless you, you really are motivated to have just a big old chunk of conductor that's 90 meters long. I mean, you can buy a spool of copper wire and reel the thing out, but then for a different carrier wave, well, the length wouldn't be quite right. I mean, it'd be in the ballpark, okay? So a couple of things here. One, this is best receive, okay? So I say that up here, right? So best receive. So what this means is that if we're not at exactly 90 meters or whatever the exact number is for this particular carrier wave, it's not that we just won't get any power being transferred from the electromagnetic wave to the antenna. It's that we just won't get as much or much as much as we could. So it doesn't mean we can't tune into the radio station. It just means we're less likely to get it, uh, be able to tune in. Now, uh, the other thing is that we can play around with what's called the electrical length of the antenna by doing things like this, which is to add a what's called a load coil in series with the conductor. And here in this picture, it's all kind of encapsulated in this little plastic cylinder, so it's a little hard to see, but you can actually see it uh, a little more easily in this um, 
the old mobile cell phone tower that you would see on uh, that people would attach to their cars or something like that. Mm -hmm. You see it on CB radio antenna, things like that. Uh, loaded coil are just literally a coil of wire. And if you remember back to our discussion of coils of wire, I mean, we've seen a lot of coils of wire in this class, but uh, when we first started talking about transformers, I mentioned that there was this thing called the inductor that is just one winding. And that is actually another component within our radio. It's the very next thing. In fact, the, the, with this very simple radio receiver that we're doing, we essentially always have a load coil that's in series with the antenna because we're assuming that the antenna is not going to be on the scale of 90 meters to receive a uh, relatively typical AM radio station. Okay, so we're going to be talking about inductors, little coils of wire, and uh, how that functions in combination with the antenna and a variable capacitor to allow us to tune into particular radio stations rather than sort of receiving signals from them all um, in our radio receiver, which as you might imagine would not be particularly convenient. So uh, stay tuned for that and I will see you for that video very shortly.